Hi everyone, Amanda here. Um, welcome to my channel. What I wanted to share with everyone today was this little antique mini album that I made um, using a recollections pad from Michaels. The, pa the paper pad that I used is called, if you can see this in there, it's called Flea Market. And um, there's 48 page, there's 48 sheets in here. And I used probably, I don't even think I used half of them because there's some colors in here that I didn't use in my mini album. And then the ones I did use still had like one or two left. So um, I used this page a lot and I used that page. I used a lot of these. Um, so, but there's so many that are left. And um, when I show you the mini album, I can show you how I used all these different pieces. But basic, basically the entire album, the mini album, mini book, was made using only this book and some items I had from my stash. So basically all the pockets, a lot of the embellishments and everything are made straight from this paper. So, um, and then I used, I think, one sheet of the gray, one sheet of brown and then probably a a good lot of black cardstock and a good lot of cream colored cardstock and um most and then on the black cardstock i used both the 110 pound paper and the 65 pound paper the hard the 110 pound paper i used for like the the pages to give them some sturdiness i don't always use do that but so I wanted anyway to my this album my thought behind this album is that my mom and i went to a quilt show um it's been many years ago in akron ohio and i wanted an album where i could showcase some of the beautiful quilts that we saw at that um show and this and quilts to me are vintagey. I mean, I know there's a lot of modern ones that are gorgeous, but um, like quilts, they just remind me of like old time vintagey things you might find at a flea market or a um, yard sale, something like that. So that's what basically inspired this album. And on the front cover, I have just one piece of the paper and it says, um, I can oh, actually turn this over. It says antiques buy, sell, trade. And that's in gold. And I did take um, a wink of Stella and I went over this whole entire gold um, piece. So if I can get it to shimmer for you, that's why. And then these pieces are cut apart from the one uh, sheet that I showed you that I used a lot of. And they look to me like metal signs that you would find on a barn or just a rummage sale, anything like that. And then I back them on the cream color paper with the black. And then I had this, I don't know what this is, but it feels like a gold paper. And I had it in my stash and basically I don't know where I got it from because I had, I think I got it in like a scrapbook kit, but I just found it laying on my table. And what I really wanted was I wanted silver because I wanted it to look like that um, silver tin looking ceiling type stuff, but I took the gold instead and it was just like this gold piece of paper and I folded it back and forth a lot and then just kind of um, tucked it in everywhere. So it says, yes, we're open, love, and then the antiques. So on the inside, I did this album um, different, a little bit differently than I normally do as well, because what I did was I tried to line up my pattern paper for the pockets and everything so that they all looked the same and cohesive. And normally I would take one, all different patterns because that's just my style. And this time I just, tried to make it so that it looked like everything was all one picture. 
I have, um, this is kind of like suitcases, which reminds me of travel. So I have um, an old map. And on this one is also a map. I think I'm gonna put this one over here. And this one here, this is a world map, like two worlds. And then I, this also is from the paper pad. And then I put, these are for extra pictures. And basically what I did was when I backed everything, I backed the cream color and then the black and I inked everything with my distress ink in the vintage photo. So everything has been inked to death. And then this one, this page, I have two pages like this where I actually put two pages together and I glued the sides and made a pocket. And in this pocket, I just made a pullout um, photo page out of one of the cut apart pages. And then this here is an old, is a Brad. And it was just one I had in my stash and I love it and it just looked a whole lot like it went with this album. The next page is probably one of my all time favorite pages and it's mostly because there's wood on the back and then these two, two pieces of paper here, these two mats, this was actually like one of those old tin pull out drawer things so what I did on each page is I created what looks like a file folder and I inked everything, of course. Um, and then I put a little index card in here. That, so it looks like a file folder. This one says family if I want to write something on it. And then this has just a little embroidery picture tucked in here as well. And I thought this is really cute because if you stick it in here, it looks like a file is sticking out of the drawer. And I did that for each side. So I just thought this was really cute. And this has like a, an ephemera piece, again, that was in my um, stash. This here is part of a jelly bean soup haul that I got from Tuesday morning. That's one of my more recent videos. So that all goes in there and I absolutely love that page. The next page is my what I consider my sewing page. And this is probably where I think the quilts will look the best. They, I had this vintage like ruler or tape measure paper and I backed it on the page with and inked everything. And then I took a cut apart sheet, which was this sheet right here and I cut out two doilies and then I just trimmed the edges and what I did was I made pockets and these are like varying sizes like this one's smaller than this side because I that's just the way I wanted it um, and then in this pocket I have a photo mat that is an old quilt picture and on this side I have an embroidery piece it says the number two and then I have this like tag, life is a treasure hunt. And honestly, I made it, but then I didn't know where I wanted to put it. So I just tucked it in there. So the doilies were cut out, backed and matted on um, cream and black. And then I took ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. It looks just like this. I got this for a dollar. And I tell you, I have used this in so many different projects. I love this and I can't get it anymore. But anyway, so then I glued that on here at the bottom just to add some interest. And then I added a button on each side and this is stamping up buttons that I just had in my stash. So the next page is probably my second favorite. And this one reminds me of a library because both sides are books. And then I have the silhouette portraits on each side. And I just fussy cut everything out and matted it, inked it and everything. And then you open this up and it looks like a photo wall. So it looks like you have a wall full of picture prints. And that's exactly what I wanted to be able to put some pictures in each of these frames and then I will put something over here on the side. I really didn't know what I wanted to do on this side so 
that's why I don't have a photo mat or nothing, but I can always put a picture there or ephemera, or maybe I want to write something about the day. So that's that, and that is probably my second favorite. The next one is kind of like a chicken coop page. That's, or like the side of a barn. That's all I can, it reminds me of because I have two more of these signs and this one says beach access. This one says exit and then way out. Um, I have a little cut apart here of a peace sign and it's all like that vintage tin looking sign stuff. And there's plenty of room if I want to tuck something else in there. And then this is just another sign that says real estate farm loans and it kind of tucks right in there. And this paper pad had so many different pieces I could cut apart that, and I didn't even use all of one page because there's more photo frames, there's arrows, um, these different kinds of arrows there, more and more arrows, the ampersand, and then, um, another portrait, a little A, and then just more photo frames and things like that. So that's what this page is. And the next one is more my crocheting page. And for this one, I put the crochet paper on the back. And then this is a place for a photo and it's the crochet paper from the kit or from the paper pad. And then I had this ribbon here and it is tape measure tape measurer ribbon and I again I don't know where I got this because I got it out of my stash and I thought what a perfect album to do which is kind of like your flea market finds and you just go through your stash and find whatever you can to use in your mini album and I just thought that that was a good idea for this different album and this says genuine antique and the paper behind it is like a quilt piece and it's popped up so that I can put the pictures underneath. And this is the second double page pocket page that I have. And there's this like vintagey looking three sign. And then again, this is just a brad. And all I did was fasten it in the back. Now, one thing I will say is if I had to do this again. What I did was I had punched the hole in here, added this little trim ribbon, and then I decided, well, it needed something else, and that's when I added the brads. But if I had to do it over again, I definitely would put the brad in first so that it didn't have anything on the back. And I might even put like a piece of washi tape or something over that. Um, I don't know yet. But I loved the jewel because it reminded me of vintage jewelry. And then the last page is my canning jar page. And this one has all the nuts and bolts and buttons and everything, marbles, all in these, stored in these little um, mason jars. I mean, you've got coins, washers, little screws and different items. Um, I think one of these marbles, a couple of them look like marbles. These look like little clock pieces. And what I did was I took, I have these mini washers in my beads and I don't even remember where I got them. I'm sure I got it like at Michael's or Joann's or something, but it's been a while. So I put some of these on here with glue dots and then this is another stamping up button. And then this one here, there's two photo mats of like, this is like a pink tin, like a whitewash tin. And that is in there. And this is like that cranberry glass. You know what milk glass is with the little bumpy stuff on it? That's what this is, only it's clear. I don't know what the name of it is because it's not like carnival glass because carnival glass kind of has an iridescent look to it but I'm not sure what the name of it is, but that's the vintage glass. And then the last piece of this is just an old picture frame. Now I don't have as many places for pictures in this album only because I'm doing the album for one event. And I, ha I do have a lot of pictures from the event, but I wanted it to be like a special album just to remember that event. And I wanted the paper to be part of 
that remembering. And then the back is just a plain piece of paper from the kit. So this is my mini vintage flea market antique mini album and um, I had a lot of fun making it. I have enough paper and stuff left that I could literally make another album but I would have to make it differently and then I could also make some cards. I think this paper would make great Father's Day cards and um, I mean there's even these tags left that I didn't use so I may do another project with it. I don't know yet but um, I hope you like my album and if you do please give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching my channel. Bye-bye.